right, guys. Welcome to Word of the Day Wednesdays. I am author Nicole D. Miller. This is my book, Stories for the Urban Soul, a compilation of short stories, novels, and poetry depicting Black characters dealing with everyday relatable life issues, from social injustice to healing to heartbreak to single parenthood, a list of relatable topics that infuse spirituality and faith with Black culture. Now, I'm feeling a little bit snazzy right now, y'all, because I just kind of got upgraded. You see, I got a little headphones on, a little mic. So hopefully the sound is top of the notch, as it should be. Um, so as you guys know, my name is Nicole D. Miller, and every week I do a Word of the Day Wednesdays to piggyback off of my latest blog. I've been blogging for 10 years now. Woo, go me. We just celebrated our 10 year at betterthanwine.net, but you can find me at nicoledmiller.com going, for, going forward. So the last blog post I just released is called Almost There, and that was birthed out of a space of the grind. This weekend, I had the privilege of attending Lit Youngstown, which is a writing conference available for you know local artists and writers. It was my first time attending. And it was cool because I could only attend as a publisher. Um, I attended the book fair and they don't allow just indie authors to sell books. So I was able to go as Indie Miller Publishing. And if you guys have been following any of my social media posts, then you know I'm gearing up for my debut novel, yes. But in this blog post, what I share it's just the stuff that you don't hear about on social media, right? The highlights is all social media shows. So I love my blog because it gives me a platform and a space to share the low lights, to share the in-between lights and all that. So what I share about in Almost There is dialogue I had with a friend who's also an entrepreneur and just asking him, you know, how is it that you're still so motivated after all this time? How can you still believe when you haven't seen the manifestation? Funny enough, he referenced going to the bathroom, <laughs> which I think is so funny. He referenced the need to go to the bathroom and just how you feel more urgent the closer you get, right? So you feel more urgent when you have to use the restroom. And it's in that urgency that you know you're so close. The closer you get, the more pressing the urge is. And so it was interesting because that's what he said he feels like with entrepreneurship. Even though it's been all this time that has passed, he's believing, he's putting in the work, he's doing the grind. He feels like, man, it's hard because I'm so close. And I thought that was such a great analogy. And in this, and thanks for joining you guys in my life. So in this blog post, I basically dissect just that exhilaration when you get, when you know you're walking in purpose, when you know you're in your identity, when you know you're manifesting these gifts. I think every person has so much inside of them that they are called to unleash and they are called to pour out in whatever sphere and vein that you're in. And when you're functioning in that flow, as stressful as it can be, as tiring as it can be, especially when you're trying to believe for something that hasn't manifested yet, you're still on a high. You're still thriving because this is what you were made for, right? So I dialogue that. I dialogue about being encouraged along the way of my pursuit of what I feel like I'm called to in writing, getting to meet one of my all-time favorite icons, Omar Tyreen, goals for African-American contemporary literature as far as I'm concerned, and even just having the publishing house and being able to publish these clients and getting such encouragement and feedback and building my team and having this opportunity at Lit Youngstown. I had an amazing experience where a man who um, has an organization in Pittsburgh doesn't even know me. It was just going to bat for me. He's just like, would you come speak? I'm self-publishing. We'll put you up. We'll pay for you. Da -da -da, all this stuff. And I'm just like, wow, amazing. So open door after open door after open door. Even still, I know so much is going to happen when this novel gets released. And my focus has been on the novel for about two and a half years now. Funny enough, I started the novel when I was completing Urban Stories. And so the first two stories in Urban Stories are related. If you guys have started the stories, then you know Lisa and Joe are the first two stories. They are uh, each other's love interests. And so we get introduced 
to Joe through Lisa's story and then we get to learn more about Joe. So both of these characters are hanging out in a black owned cafe in New York, Devon's Cafe, and that has inspired the novel. So the novel takes place in a similar venue. We meet Devon, we meet some of the characters at Devon's Cafe. So I really am building this world of the series of Devon's Cafe. And I'm excited to just unveil more of the novel because we are gearing up for the pre-sale. We have been working, my team and I have been working so hard for the last six months to get this pre-sale together. So I kind of touch on that on the blog. I share a little bit about the novel. If you haven't checked it out, go there and read, NicoleDMiller.com. But in the next week or two, you're about to see the promo. You're about to see all of the things that, you know, is in reference to that. We have the book cover reveal that's about to pop off. So I'm super excited about that. You guys, it's just been so much work, right? It's been so much work. So now I'm in the final stages of editing. I've literally been editing for a year. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I've been editing for a year. <laughs> and that's what I was, I actually had a coaching call with a potential client yesterday and she was saying, um, do you ever have uh, multiple projects going at once? Which I shared with her that I do because clearly I started writing my novel when I was finishing Urban Stories. But I'm such a finisher that for me, it's like, I'm about to finish this project. I'm not about to be out here. Um, thanks, Elijah. I'm not to, about to be out here having all my hands in all these pots. I need to finish cooking what I'm cooking and then start the next meal. So I encourage her the same way. And I think a lot of artists and writers struggle with that because they're so multi-talented, they have a variety of gifts, so it's hard for them to focus and be disciplined to have that administrative side, you know, where they're completing projects. So definitely my encouragement to those types is to complete the project. Um, but it's been a journey and what I had to learn about writing, and this is what I told my um, client yesterday, was when you're a writer, People never see the draft, right? When you publish something, no one ever sees that first draft. There are so many drafts <laughs> that happen until the final, final outcome. And so for me, this novel has been eye-opening in that way because it's shown me that I need tenacity to endure the editing process. Like I had a good story. I knew I was a good writer. I had a good story. But it's like being refined, right? And I have Manny on here, so you already know Manny. Like, it's like being refined in your faith. You need to go through a process until you are polished enough and there's a finished work. That's how this, pro this book project has been. It has been a refining. It was good. The story was good, but it needed to be sweet. I didn't know about story structure. I only knew about writing short stories and poetry and nonfiction. Writing creative fiction is a totally different animal. So even though I'm a good storyteller, I still needed to follow these rules to create an actual novel, right? So that's what the last year and a half has been. And shout out to my editor, uh, Gwen. Gwen V, she's, you know, we're, we're IG followers. She's amazing. I thank God for her manuscript critique. If it was not for that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> like, that novel, I wouldn't even have hope for the novel if it wasn't for her. So thank God for her expertise. But... Long story short, we're gearing up for that. That is such a huge deal that I've really scaled back a lot of my events this month because I had to tidy up the novel and focus on that, but I'm also in the midst of publishing clients. I think I'm going to have two new published clients just this year in addition to my own novel. So I've definitely tried to scale back on our events, but if you guys don't already know, there's Futureland happening this weekend. Alicia Ellis, who's my girl, is spearheading that, and so I'll be in the house for sure. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're business-minded, if you're tech, creative, all the things, you definitely want to be there. So check out Futureland for sure. Other than that, be on the lookout for novel stuff. Be on the lookout, because I, I got hooked up this time. I feel like every time I release a book, Everything just goes to another level. So this time we have coupons, we have bundles, stay tuned for the audiobook. Like it's going down. The things are going down. So in addition to a great story, like the story is amazing. So all right guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thanks for ch for dropping in on my Word of the Day Wednesdays. Again, this is Nicole D. Miller, author of Stories for the Urban Soul and my soon to come novel. Are you ready for the name? When Love Wins. Okay, so I did drop that in my blog, so I figure I'll give y'all a little something something right now. So yeah, when love wins, 
definitely a dope concept. And uh, if you want to learn more, you can go to NicoleDMiller.com. Stay tuned for the information on the pre-sale. Thanks for tuning in, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for the support.